Whether a community has been through a flood, bushfire, cyclone, years of drought or some other disaster like the pandemic, recovery for some will take time. So a national agency that will stick around for this recovery will draw on lessons from previous disasters, will ask the important question, what do you think is needed? And will champion steps to lessen the impact of future disasters is something that I have long strongly advocated. On 5 May of this year, Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced the establishment of the National Recovery and Resilience Agency. And that was in response to a key recommendation of the Royal um, Commission into National Natural Disaster Arrangements. This historic move means there is a single enduring national agency that will drive Australia's capability to be better prepared for natural disasters and drought and recover from all hazards. From our origins after the 2019 North Queensland monsoonal trough, the principle of locally led, locally understood, locally implemented has guided all of our work. We have staff in every Australian state and territory, and this includes our recovery support officers, or RSOs as we call them, who operate from their agency vehicles. They work closely with their local councils and other community leaders, government agencies and industry bodies. Prime Minister Morrison calls them our boots on the ground and hearts at the table. And they make sure people get the information they need and direct them to the right help and support for their particular situation. The National Network is a critical part of our operation. You can't create government policy and services without knowing how they'll play out on the ground and without understanding the people that they're designed to serve, the survivors. My experience in North Queensland gave me a deep understanding of the long-term impacts of natural disasters on regional communities. Shortly after my appointment, I was quickly on the ground in some of the worst affected areas, and I came to understand just how devastating, widespread and shocking the event was. We worked closely with mayors, council staff, community members, graziers, farmers, and small business owners to understand their recovery needs, and then to make sure that the government support hit the mark. Now, as my role takes me to areas impacted by the bushfires, floods and cyclones elsewhere, often overlaid by years of drought, mice plagues and grasshopper infestations and COVID restrictions, I continue to be impressed by the way people affected by these significant challenges get on with the job of putting their lives and communities back in order. We Australians are a stoic mob. Communities are best supported by everyone working together. The National Recovery and Resilience Agency works hand in glove with states, territories and local governments who also play a vital disaster response and recovery role and who are a key agent in helping communities to minimise the impact of these natural disasters. We all have a role to play in the immediate response, recovery and preparedness phases. And our collective efforts will lead to much better outcomes for Australians individually and the nation as a whole. In late 2017, Deloitte Access Economics estimated that for the preceding decade, natural disasters have cost Australia over $18 billion per year on average, taking into account both tangible and intangible costs. While much effort is and must be focus on the immediate cleanup and reinstatement of essential public services and infrastructure, we need to do this with an eye on the future and not just build back, but rather build back stronger. We need to do this to try and break the cycle of building, repairing and replacing, only to have to come and do it again when the next storm, cyclone or flood strikes. As a nation, we are good at mopping up, cleaning up, standing up. We are, after all, the land of drought and flooding rains, tragically. But it is simply not sustainable for the taxpayers and ratepayers to keep picking up the tab. 
the National Recovery and Resilience Agency will drive efforts to minimise risk and the impact of major events. It's imperative we do this. The Productivity Commission findings cited by the Insurance Council Australia reveal that 97% of all disaster funding is spent on the cleanup, 97%, and just 3% on mitigation and being better prepared. Now we need to flip that, we need to address the imbalance. The science tells us that longer, hotter, drier summers and more extreme weather are here to stay. We can never flood, cyclone, drought or fireproof the country, but we can do better preparedness. I know that resilience means different things to different people, depending on where they live. People who have had everything thrown at them across generations don't need a lecture on being more resilient. They don't need more slogans. What they deserve is the support and encouragement to be better prepared. And every level of government has a role to play, together in partnership with the local communities that they serve. Preparedness must be the prism through which local communities plan and execute real fair income strategies that work for them and their particular circumstances. Through the National Recovery and Resilience Agency and other initiatives, the Australian Government is throwing substantial support behind local communities. These are your communities to help prepare for disasters and to minimise their impacts. However, there are many players in the recovery space and the Australian Government is but one. State agencies and local government have a key role to play. M mitigation and risk reduction cannot be the work of government alone. The public also must step up. We all share this responsibility. It's estimated that many of us are simply not prepared. We have a generational opportunity to address many of the challenges we face. The responsibility to balance public safety and our expectations of the Australian way of life with what is responsible and possible development is long past due. Now this is going to be a difficult and at times painful national discussion. Living life among the gum trees, developing on floodplains and cliff tops in coastal areas and building homes and workplaces that are not fit for the risk must be challenged. They have to be challenged. This is not an exclusive list. The challenge is how we collectively prepare ourselves for the next disaster while assuring that we support those recovering from the last because there will always be another major event that challenges as a country.